Hello, I'm Dave Dyer. I'm the curator of natural history with the Ohio History Connection. And we're gonna talk about Ice Age animals today. And I'll bet a lot of you'd be very surprised if you knew that there were elephants in Ohio. That's kind of a shocking concept, isn't it? But we had two different species that lived right here in the state. And the first one, and the one that's the most common, is the mastodon. And a lot of people are familiar with the woolly mammoth. You've seen that in TV and you've heard about it. But the mastodon was a relative of the woolly mammoth. And it was actually more common in the state. We have more records of the mastodon um, in Ohio than we do for the woolly mammoth. And if you come to our museum at the Ohio History Center, you'll see a complete full mounted skeleton of a mastodon. So what we're gonna do is look at a couple different bones and teeth of these different animals that lived here in the Ice Age. So we'll start off with the mastodon I just talked about. And I'll pick up a tooth. And yes, this is one tooth. This is one single tooth from a mastodon. And sometimes people look at it and go, well, it looks like a row of four teeth because it's got these cusps or bumps on the teeth. This is a, so this is actually one tooth. This is the last molar in the jaw. And this tooth is designed for crushing. So if you imagine, this is a lower tooth. If you imagine the upper tooth, it fits down in between these, these cusps or bumps. And it's a really good tooth design for crushing. So it'll crush leaves and twigs and branches and even eat aquatic plants. It eats lots of, lots of different kind of plant material. So let's compare that tooth of the mastodon with the tooth of the woolly mammoth. So what's the first thing you'd notice about this tooth compared to our mastodon? You probably notice that this one's very flat. So this is the part that where the chewing occurs and this would be the, where the gums are, right about here. So this part of the tooth is sticking out above the gums. And this tooth is from the woolly mammoth, and this is designed for eating mostly grasses and sedges. So it has a very efficient grinding surface here for grinding up grasses, which are really very coarse. And if you think about like your lawnmower blades at home, you're supposed to sharpen your lawnmower blades every year or so. And that's because the grass is so coarse, it wears down the tooth. So a tooth like this, which have lo has lots of enamel on the surface, is well designed for lasting for a long time when you're grinding grasses. And you can see the enamel goes right down through the tooth. You see it, so this animal has rows and rows of enamel to help make a really strong uh, tooth. So we'll look at this piece, and um, you probably can guess that that's part of a tusk. So mammoths and mastodons, just like modern elephants, had long tusks. And this is just the very tip of it. And if you look carefully, you can see where it's worn right there. So this animal used this tusk quite a bit, and it actually wore down the tip of it. And you might wonder what this is made out of. A lot of people think it's all enamel. And enamel is what we saw on the mastodon tooth and those rows on the mammoth tooth. But in the tusk, there's really no enamel. Once the animal um, grows up a little bit, it loses all that enamel. So it has just soft material inside the tooth, which is made out of dentin, which is the same thing that's inside of your teeth or the, the molars on the mastodon and mammoth. And it has a really thin layer of material. You can kind of see it here. And that's called cementum, so that just sort of covers and protects that dentin. You can see a picture of the woolly mammoth right here. And you can see the mastodon here. So you, first thing you notice about the mammoth, it's a little bit taller, has a higher head, has kind of a sloping um, back, where the mastodon has kind of a straight back. So that's kind of the difference. And usually most people are more familiar with that outline that we see on the woolly mammoth. So these are big. Um, this mastodon's about eight feet tall at the shoulder. Our woolly mammoth here is just over 10 feet. And when you come to the Ohio History Center and you look at our big specimen, it's about 10 feet tall. It's a mastodon that's really quite large, a very nice large uh, specimen. So to give you an idea of the size of these animals, anybody guess what bone that is from the body? Kind of a large square looking bone. Well, this is actually a toe bone. So if you imagine this bone right here in humans, that's what this bone is here, what it, how big it is in the mastodon. So it kind of gives you an idea how big and strong those feet are for holding up a lot of that weight. And the other thing we'll look at, and sometimes when I pick this up, people go, well, that's a tusk, because it's kind of shaped like you imagine a tusk to be. But this bone's actually the rib. And if you compare like this rib with the human rib, so my rib would go from here to here, so this gives you an idea how really, really huge these animals are. They're really found all over the state. You do think of these as being very rare and they're only dug up once in a great while. 
But if you look at our map of Ohio, we've plotted um, using dots and squares and triangles where these animals are found all over the state. So I said that earlier that the mastodons are the most common. And if you look at, there's lots more round dots than there are triangles. So the dots are the mastodon, the triangles are the woolly mammoth. And there's over, been over 250 records of these found around the state. And most of the time when I say there's a record found or a specimen found, that doesn't mean we have a whole specimen or a whole skeleton. That usually means somebody has found like a single tooth or a single bone or a couple of bones. And if you find something like this, call us, we'll help you identify it and maybe you could donate it to our collections. So the next animal we're gonna talk about is also very large and it's one that people don't think of very often. So this is called the giant beaver. And when you look at this skull, it looks a lot like our modern beaver. And I'll pick that up and show you. So this is a beaver we have living in Ohio today. This is the Ice Age giant beaver. And it's called giant because it's so much larger than the one that's found today. And this animal would have weighed about 250 pounds and about six feet long. So if you could imagine a rodent, because beavers are rodent, if you could imagine a beaver the size of a black bear, it gives you an idea of how huge these animals were. And look at these large incisors in the front. And here's one that came out of a skull, and it gives you a really good idea how big those teeth are as well. And when we think about the modern beaver, you know, you think about cutting down trees. It can use its really, its really sharp front teeth from gnawing trees and cutting, down, cutting them down to make its lodges. So people used to think that the giant beaver must have cut down big trees and made these great big lodges or dams. And nobody's ever found a dam of a giant beaver, so we don't think that they actually would cut down trees. And also, these incisors are not very sharp. In the modern beaver, they're very sharp like chisels, but the giant beaver, they're kind of rounded and not as sharp, so they wouldn't be efficient for cutting down trees. And it turns out, using some chemical studies, people have determined that these things ate aquatic plants. So they're almost more like a giant muskrat than a giant beaver, where they would swim around in lakes and ponds and pull up aquatic vegetation and eat it. So the next animal I'm going to talk about is probably one you've never heard of. It's called a stag moose. And it's in the deer family. It's related to the modern deer. And it looked a lot like um, a modern elk, which lives out west and used to live in Ohio, or maybe even a moose. So they called it a stag moose, which means it looks a little bit like an elk and a little bit like a moose. So I'm going to pick up this bone. And you might not know what bone this is right away, but this is the long bone that's in the foot. And if you think of your hands or feet, you've got a series of long bones that run up through your palm and through the sole of your foot. So this is one from the foot. So this is called a metatarsal. And you know, you can, in humans it'd be pretty short, but in these giant um, deer-like animals, it walked up on its tiptoes. So its toes were down here. This is a long bone in the foot. And to give you an example of the size to compare with, I'll pick up one from, um, this is from a modern deer. And you think of deer, they're relatively tall, right? They're about this tall from the ground. So um, if you compare the metatarsal of the deer to the, the stag moose, you can see how much larger this thing was. It was a very, very large animal, really about the size of a moose. So all the animals that we've talked about so far, from the mastodons and the giant beaver and to this, this big deer-like stag moose, are all herbivores, which means they eat plants, right? So they tend to be more the prey species. So animals would prey on these animals. So people like want to know, well, like what kind of predator did we have in Ohio? It must have been pretty big, right? It must have had big scary teeth so we could attack these other animals. And I'm going to show you a skull, and you probably everybody will probably recognize this. This is a saber-toothed cat, and it's not a tiger. People tend to call it a saber-toothed tiger, but it's not related at all to the tigers. It's, so we just call it a saber-toothed cat. And the key features on these guys are these great big canine teeth. So for this thing to use its teeth for stabbing, it had to open its mouth about this far to be able to engage those large teeth. And it's important to note that these have not been found in Ohio yet. We think they probably lived here. They've been found in states around Ohio, but so far nobody's found one right here in the state. But they probably were here, so I always tell people, keep your eyes open. If you find any unusual bones or any big teeth that look like these, let us know. And this is a single a saber or upper in, uh, canine tooth from the saber tooth. So the gums would have been right to here. So this is about how much would stick out of the tooth or out of the, the skull. You'd see that much of the tooth. And, you know, you tend to think of these things like, 
being very aggressive predators and you know jumping on the back of a bison and biting its neck and killing it and eating it. But people started noticing if you look at the tooth in side direction, it's really very narrow, isn't it? Scientists realized that if you put a lot of pressure on this, this tooth would just snap. So what they think, how um, saber-tooth hunted, is they had great big forearms. Their bones and their legs show that they had large forearms and big claws. So they're more like an ambush predator. And a lot of cats are like that, where they hide in the brush or in the trees, they wait for something to come by, they leap out, grab it with their big forearms. And we think they use these canine teeth as sort of like a puncture, like to grab it and use the canine teeth to stab it and maybe kill it or injure it and then be able to, to finish it off later. So that's what we think the function of these teeth were. Well, thanks for watching today. And if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. My email address is ddyer, D-D-Y-E-R, at ohiohistory, that's one word, ohiohistory.org. And you can also go to our website, ohiohistory.org slash learn at home to get more information. Thank you.